There are those who said this day would never come. But real patriots remember that Shaft once said they would animate all of the Minigatari series. But not to be fair, that was back when final season was still going to be the final season. Once Nisio Eason decided to not end the series for like the fifth time, it wasn't all that clear if his new books would ever receive anime adaptations. Plus, Shaft as a studio was kind of going through some things in the 2010s. Two of the three guys behind the entire Minigatari anime series left the company to go the freelance route, and many of the animators walked out as well, citing, among other things, the less than satisfying working conditions. Even Akiyuki Shimbo, the guy who's largely responsible for why Shaft shows look like that, took a step back from supervising all Shaft projects, and for all of 2023, Shaft didn't release a single anime. That hasn't happened since, like, 2012. But they weren't just sitting idly by, waiting for people to stop saying that the studio died a decade ago. They were hard at work, focusing all of their attention on bringing back the series that made them big in the first place. And to cut to the chase, yeah, I'm thinking we're back. I am shocked at how good Often Monster Season is. I mean, it's by no means the best entry in the franchise. Uh, my favorite still is and probably will forever be Bake, but it did do the best thing that it possibly could do. It made me feel like hardly any time had passed since the last entry. And I don't mean that it caught me up to speed with where we last left off. I, I didn't need that. I just finished reading the light novels. I mean more that it feels like Monogatari, which was my main concern for this show. Madoka Magica. That's another Shaft series. I like it quite a bit. Really cool style, great music, interesting story, but I didn't really care for Magia record. That show just, it just didn't quite capture the unique style and sensibilities of its predecessor. I'm not sure I care much for the story of the characters either. I'm guessing that I didn't because I don't even remember them. The point being though, that show just didn't feel like Madoka Magica to me. And that should be expected because it came out 10 years after Madoka Magica and had a bunch of different hands fiddling around with the formula. Now, the gap between Zuko and Often Monster Season is only half the gap between the two Madoka Magica shows, but I still expected to be dissatisfied in the same way regarding the style and the animation quality. And maybe less so on the story front, but I did have separate concerns for that. And my worries, at least on the animation front, went away after episode two. Not one, because I still haven't forgotten about what happened with Zom 100. The first episode looked a little too good to be true. I anticipated a sharp decrease in quality with subsequent episodes, but I'm happy to say, that didn't happen. The entire season looked just as good as the first episode. The character movements, the shot composition, the color choice and visual metaphors, all of it looked consistently great and had that quintessential Shaft feel. Not to sound longhoused or anything, but Midori Yoshizawa did a phenomenal job directing this season, which is pretty surprising because the only other thing she had directed was a few episodes of Magia record. What a twist! Like I said earlier, didn't like that one. Felt like a cheap imitation, but this show, this show feels like the real deal. Her style definitely draws heavily from Oishi, which is not a problem for me because I love that man and his sense of style. To my knowledge, the only time you see live action in Monogatari is in Bage and Kizu, the two parts that he directed. I love seeing live action in my anime. I can't really tell you why, I just, uh... I just think it's neat. And Yoshizawa seems to agree. There is a ton of live action this time, probably more than there's ever been, but it's not exactly used in the same way as before. It's often short video segments or flair for the title cards. There's also more of a personal feel to the camera. And this isn't the only thing that separates her style from both Oishi and Itamura. There was this effect applied whenever old clips of the show popped up again. The aspect ratio would change to four by three, which was a very simple but still creative way to convey that we're reminiscing about the past. And this isn't the only thing the show does with the aspect ratio, either. The series is no stranger to breaking the fourth wall, but I don't think they've ever done it quite like this. There is a healthy amount of artsy eye candy this go around for people like me. It's always a pleasure to see what kind of visual nonsense Shaft has cooked up. I never expected a scene to be animated like old school Pokemon, but they did it, and I'm all for it. Aside from Game Boy graphics, there's a bunch of other references this season. I'm not going to list them all because there's just too many, and I probably don't even know half of them. I did recognize the callbacks to earlier art in the series, which were fairly plentiful. And while there is a fair amount of self-referential material and retreading of old visual gags, I never felt like the show was trying to weaponize my nostalgia and get me to excuse an uninspired product created for the sole purpose of nickel and diming the fans by jingling in front of us the keys we so love. This season stands out on its own. You know, 
know, like stylistically. It's familiar, but different. And I think you could apply that to the soundtrack as well, although at the time of writing this, the official OST has not been released yet. So I haven't listened to it as much as I would have liked to, especially that new Nautico opening. Maybe it's the recency bias talking, but it is my new favorite Nautico theme. And uh, also Onenoki theme, since it's a duet. I guess that sort of leads me into the next thing I want to talk about. Shaft decided to release both Off Season and Monster Season in unison, swapping between novels each arc instead of fully adapting either either season in full. This isn't the first time Shaft has changed the order of things, but this is the first time there was a concerted effort to release it this way, instead of it being largely the result of production hangups and delays. I haven't read either Off or Monster Season yet, not that I even could, at least not officially, but as I understand it, Off Season is mostly a collection of one-off stories that vary in length but tend to be pretty short. And they usually don't move the main story along, they just act as a fun little side story. Whereas Monster Season brings back the old crew and starts up the main story again. That's just the perception that I have, and that might be why Shaft shuffled the order a bit. Offseason sounds an awful lot like Koyomi, which I'm willing to bet is not anyone's favorite section of the series. Now, don't get me wrong, it's still good. Minigatari has no bad parts. It's just that, well, you know, there's a reason that each episode is only like 10 minutes. If the series came back after all of these years and all we got was that, it might have ruffled a few feathers, regardless of how entertaining the stories might be. This leads a little bit into my other concern going into Off and Monster Season. As much as I joke about Minigatari being a show about nothing, I always felt like it it was about something. And, you know, usually some variation of growing up and loving yourself. But if this was truly going to be an off season where nothing happens, then I was worried that the show might feel like filler, essentially. This is not the case. Putting aside the monster season episodes, the off season side stories were surprisingly weighty, one more so than the other two. But even Tsukihi Undo made me appreciate the smaller little Aradagi sister more than I ever did before. Her line about how she's never really listened to anyone actually made me laugh to myself because I can't tell if it's a joke or not and I don't know if it's funnier that she's serious or if she's just being silly because there are some very important conversations she's a party to. But the highlight arc of this season has got to be Nadeko Draw. I always liked what the series did with Nadeko, but I thought that her story had a perfectly good conclusion back in second season. Sure, I was open to bringing her back for a fun cameo here and there, but this arc? It didn't feel like a fun cameo. It felt like a necessary continuation of her story that tied up all the loose ends and made me like this character even more than I already did. Her haircut still sucks though. I enjoyed Bon Appetit quite a bit as well. It was very interesting to see Kiss Shot before she became Kiss Shot, and I love the way that both of these episodes looked and sounded. The bright glowing colors contrasting with all the deep shadows while that heavy violin music played in the background, it left an impression on me. <gasps> I was surprised to see Araragi pop up again and reclaim his main character status so soon. A lot of the statements and trailers I had seen for this season emphasized that his story was done, and this time we were focusing on the girls instead. So I really didn't expect to see him back at all. I mean, I already knew about the existence of Monster Season, and I'm pretty sure there's a family season now too, so I knew he was going to show up again eventually. I just figured it'd be safe for the end, which... Well, I guess that is technically what happened because it was the final arc of this batch of episodes, but there's still a lot of off-season that didn't get adapted yet. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I was very surprised to find out that this season was only 14 episodes. I mean, the last time they titled a Monogatari entry after its light novel designation was with second season, which got 26 episodes, and then five more with Hana, which had to be delayed for various reasons. I saw a post saying that they need about 50 episodes to cover everything, and right now we've got 14. I'm not sure how Shaft is going to divide up these stories going forward, but I will continue to trust the plan. I know I saw this one interview somewhere, but I can't find it anymore, it's lost to time, but it was basically saying that they intentionally reordered the arcs to flow into each other better. So for instance, the first arc mainly follows Oninoki, who meets with Nadeko, which is why the next arc is the Nadeko arc. And that arc ends with her talking to Shinobu, which is why the next arc is a Shinobu arc. I didn't mind the reordering, but I also don't know what I'm missing, so all I can really say is that this new order is easy to follow, at least so far, and and it's pretty intuitive, but that could all change in the future. But at least it's a future that I am really excited to see. When 
I got into the series, Zuko had already released, meaning that I could watch every part of this anime at my own pace, which is why I watched it all inside of a week. This was the first time I had to wait for new Minigatari episodes, and as painful as that was, it was also refreshing to see something new and incomplete, and every week I got the chance to theorize about what would happen next and opine on which character might show up. If I haven't made it clear by now, I had a really fun time with this season, and I cannot wait to rewatch it. Actually, I might just wait until it's all finished up, but you get what I mean. I'm really trying to think of some complaints to prove I haven't taken any shaft shackles, but I really don't have any, except for this one thing, but it sounds really petty when I say it out loud. I wish there were more openings. I said it, all right? There's only two this time, and they're both great, but it bothers me that so many episodes don't have an opening. I wouldn't bring this up for any other series, but the openings in Monogatari are different from other shows. I feel like they're just as much a part of the show as the actual show itself. I get that some of these arcs are only only gonna be like one or two episodes, so having an exclusive opening seems like a bit of an ask. But Red Eye Circulation is still probably the most popular Monogatari opening, and that thing was just the opening for two episodes. Maybe they'll add some in the Blu-ray. But now tell me what you think. Did you like the new season, or were you disappointed? Or have you not watched it yet? If you haven't, then allow me to repeat a line from my last Monogatari video. Don't watch it, you wouldn't like it. Anyway, until next time, Ave Maria, Deus Volt, and a big thank you to all the cultured.